Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome back to a live edition of the Highbury Squad. It's a come to Jesus Monday madness. Praise be. Super Kevin Campbell is back, baby. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Been in the sunshine, have enjoyed some rays. Working from my phone works for me. Does it work for you? All I know is no matter how much I try, he still looks younger than me day after day after day. It's my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kevin, Super Kevin Campbell. <laughs> Squaddies, how are you? Good to be back. Good to see yourself. Squaddies, it's been a little while. And what I want is for you, the salute, part of the salute is to touch the like button. Now, if you don't touch the like button as we go along, you're not going to see me. I'll tell you why. We're supposed to be the hybrid squad and you're supposed to be the squaddies. Vinny's got it. Sophie's got it. I've got it. I shouldn't have to be asking you halfway through the, the show to hit the like button. So do you know what? On salute. Hit the like button. So at E squaddies and hit the like button. There you go. <laughs> what an introduction. What else that, do we need? Hey, it's Monday Madness. Let's Absolutely. see if they can do it. And as Lone Star says, HS slaughters. That's right. Take no prisoners. Respect. Correct. Yeah. Smash Respect it. Respect to you. Respect us. No problem. Absolutely. This has become a thing for Kev. Take it seriously or pay the con consequences and the price. All right, lots of salutes coming your way. Lots of love, Super Kev. The usual suspects are in the house. Danny D, the Tottenham fan, coming back for more. Just jealous of our transfer window. Potentially is Danny D. But Super Kev, I'd like to start at the very tippy top. It's the summer. It's the summer series. But listen... There's also an element of the fact that it is summer. I want to have some fun, right? So I created the summer series. We've had some great conversations with some great folks. If you guys missed my conversation and Super Kevs with Callum Chambers and Jonathan Bond, you've got to go back and find it. It's in the summer series, the last episode. Top shelf stuff. Really love, lovely guys. And Super Kev, I'd like you to be my witness here and let everyone know that I did come clean because a lot of people have been asking, did I confess to Callum Chambers that I've been very critical of him and basically did not like him? Well, you didn't say you didn't like him. You just said you were critical. thought I'd but, had that lot of his at the But end. <laughs> what I will say is, squad, he's got to watch it because it's a really good watch. And yes, you do hold your hand up. You do. And you tell him straight, which is, listen, just like any player, players could take that. They could accept that. It's when, you know, after games, people say, oh, you've done well, you've done well. And then all of a sudden on social media, there's just stabbing you in the back, juking you in the back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you could take honesty. And players are the first ones who know whether they've played well or not. Trust me. Totally get it. And, uh, yeah, so I did. And it's a great piece. So go check it out. I'm wearing my shades today. It's summer. I'm in California. Why not? Got the Rolling Stones t-shirt on, Kev. Got the Greek evil beads out. I've got the old school bandana. Tell you what, you know so. what? Let's have some fun. Thanks for the sunshine you sent. I'll tell you what, Manchester this evening. Is it? Is it? It rained it, earlier on today. Is it, it roasting? Is absolutely beautiful. Clear blue sky. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> The only thing I haven't done is coloured my hair, but that will come, kids. Don't worry about it. I'm sure uh, the squaddies will let me know about that. Now, Super Kev, the other thing um, that I wanted to bring up on this fine Monday evening before we get stuck into the conversation is the owners of the Arsenal won again. What? 
Won again? What do you mean, Soph? They won again. Oh, they won again. They won another title. Last night, to build on that little trophy that Mr. Cronky has there, which is the Super Bowl with the LA Rams. Hadn't won it in 20... Okay, I'm shit at maths. Kev will correct me. 23 years. They hadn't won that since 1999. Super Kev is a massive US sports fan, so he knows the greatest show on turf. You remember that, Super Kev? Yes, last I do. Time? Yes, I do. What a team. What enough offense. They were led by Kurt Warner. Uh, yep. Incredible team. And uh, they were just superb. Very right. difficult to stop. Very, very difficult. Very Mike difficult Martz and his insane genius offensive um, formations. They had a great running back. They had a great wide receiver. Wide receivers. 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 Yeah, they had a core of them, didn't they? Yep. They were good. Um, so it took them 23 years. Hear me where I'm going. This show is not going in a direction that you think it is, Gooners. It's going in another direction. Okay. Last night. Cronkies took over the Colorado Avalanche in the year 2000. Five years ago, the Avalanche had the worst record in the NHL. They took on a rookie coach, didn't have much experience in driving, leading an NHL team. They took on a... VP of personnel, Sakic, who has proven to be very good and has a great pedigree in the game. Kev, five years. Yep. Josh Kroenke, a huge part of that. This is him at the game last night. Victorious once again, bringing in a championship. Do you know where I'm going here, Kev? Sophie, easy. We've just got to wait two more years. So it's been three eight. years, hasn't it? Is yeah, it three wait, years, it's been three 17, 17 since we won the title now. Well, we can't really talk about that. So <laughs> I just, <laughs> no, wait, I'm, so, on, I'm talking you... about, I'm talking about under this rookie manager. Oh, that's okay. Obviously what's gone on before you got Wenger in that, you got Emery in that and all that, which is fine. But we're talking about, they done it in five years. So if you're going right. that way, let's start from where they've, they've said, right, we're going to stick to our blueprint. Okay, let's do that. Because take that. They have a model which they use in all their clubs. Okay. Also, your spelling of there. I'm just saying that out of love. Got to okay. take care of these things. Okay. Avalanche are around you, same as Arsenal, but they do have some veteran players. Cogliano who has been around the league for a long time. They had some veteran players in there, but yes. And and hear me out. Sean McVay, the coach of the Rams, Super Kev, very young, comes in, um, has high octane um, offense, you know, wants to do things a certain way, um, wants to be able to... Vespa, be quiet. Somebody to... likes Sean McVay. <laughs> yeah, she does Sean McVay. Um, wants to be able to lead from creativity from the front put on the points on the on the board, but at the same time built this defense, right? It, they went, they lost, they went to a conference final, they lost, they went back, they won. But he stuck with Sean McVay and his young manager and his ability to connect with players on a different level compared to perhaps what he has done in the past as an owner, right? Mm -hmm. Avalanche, five years, they, they have the VP of personnel, they have the manager, the coach, um, Badar, or I can't remember his name. I'm not going to sit here and profess to be an expert, but I do love hockey. My team's the Ducks. Yes. What rhymes with duck? Suck. That's what we did this year. We sucked. Um, but Kev, again, similar. Building, building, building. You've got some veteran players. You've got some young players. For those of our squaddies in the chat who love American sports, chime in, jump in. But they took over the franchises. They weeded stuff out. Kev, I'm not trying to say American sports and English football and the Premier League are the same. Of course, we know about salary caps and of course, we know about the parity. Of course, we know about all of these different things. But the point is to look at them. Last night, I sat and I watched it to the very end because I wanted to see how they behaved because the Stanley Cup is different to a lot of US trophies. 
number one, the captain actually goes up, gets gets the trophy and lifts it. In all of the other sports in the US, it's the owner that does that. So the closest thing to football is the Stanley Cup for me. I, I felt that even before I knew the Cronkies owned the Avalanche. When I first moved to the States and I went to games, I felt like I could give it some at a hockey game versus the other sports, Kev. And on the ice last night, what I loved in the main broadcast is they didn't even interview Stan or Josh. It was about the people that put the put the team together, the team, the manager, the VP of personnel, and the surrounding stories about this franchise that hadn't won in 21 years. And it showed Josh and it showed Stan celebrating. They were having a good time on the ice, Kev. They were having a really good time. And so when I saw that last night, I was like, that's the closest thing to football that you're going to get as a US sports owner, in my, in my humble opinion. And maybe some of our American listeners will share their thoughts on that. But right now, they are the soup du jour in sports ownership in the US. As we go into the most important transfer window again, Super Kev, what's your take on what you're seeing and what I'm saying about maybe there is a road, maybe the road just hasn't been as visible for everyone through this yeah, time? That's, that's understandable. The road hasn't been as visible and Arsenal fans, rightly so, can question what's going on. Let's be honest, he can. Um, a lot of what is it, two eight-place finishes and obviously a fifth, just missing out on Champions League, you could question. There's been a little progress there, just missing out when it was in our own hands, etc. But these guys seem to have that, they have that knack by the looks of things. So when they take charge, they have a knack. Now, listen, I wholehearted, hand on heart, I... I hope and wish and pray it happens at Arsenal, for sure. Of course I do. But one thing that they do, they stick to their principles, Soph. And that young coaches having different thoughts on, on how they do things is very important to them once they take charge. And they allow them to build a foundation. Because Sean McVay didn't have the success straight away. And it would have been easy for the fan base to ask for somebody else. Ask for somebody with a lot more experience. He was a youngster, kind of got caught in the headlights against the Patriots in the, in the first Super Bowl. It would have been easy for them to say, no, you're gone. But what did they do? They deadened the noise and they let him get to work. And they built and built. And then they done the key. They went out and got the key pieces. One being the quarterback, Soph. <laughs> one being the quarterback. And once they got the quarterback to go with that defense, they win. They give the young coach at the Avalanche carte blanche, really, to go and do and fix it and build a foundation Five years later, Sophie, the champions, they win the Stanley Cup. So, of course, I see comparisons to it. We want it to happen. Of course we do. But do you know what, Sophie, I say about this window? Do you remember when Josh Kroenke and Edu spoke out last summer? Mm -hmm. And they were saying, you know, to be very excited and the way they're going to do it, they're going to bring the young players in, then they're going to bring in more experience, etc. I think they're sticking to their words, so Obviously, we've still got to get more people in the building. So it's not all done yet. But you know what? It seems as though they're sticking to the narrative. Yeah. And you know what? If we get if we get the players that we're linked with for now, I think it's one of the best windows we've had in a hell of a long time. I can't argue with that, Kev. John Henry, the owner of Liverpool, the Boston Red Sox, was very patient when he took over the Boston Red Sox. They hadn't won the World Series in 90-odd years. Wow. Teams like the Red Sox, 
the Cubs, the White Sox thought they were cursed, Kev, that they would never, ever of win course. it again. Yeah. You got Cronky on the left and the Glazers on the right. Arsenal and Tottenham, two teams, Super Kev, who set the tone in the Premier League, built one of the greatest rivalries of all time. Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira, Thierry Henry, Martin Keown, Ruud van Nisselrooy, you name it, they did it. Unfortunately, these two owners haven't translated as well as John Henry yet in the Premier League. But I do believe there's a difference between our owner and the Glazers. I think the Glazers were just trying to pay themselves a little dividend of a few million dollars the other day. Whereas I think Kroenke's agenda, even potentially since the Wenger days, and when Josh handed over the FA Cup to Mikel, of course, is a little bit different, Kev than the agenda and the mantra and the business model of Manchester United. Which leads me to this part of the conversation then, if you're looking at the clubs, the way they're run, the way they're built, do you reunite with your old manager if you're Martinez? Or do you roll the dice and go for something different? I'm asking you as a player. I don't I don't know. I don't know what their relationship was so far. I've no idea. Um how Lissandro Martinez feels about, you know, linking up with Ten Hag again. I, I, I don't know. But one thing I do know is Arsenal should go all out for this guy because he plays in multiple positions as well as every other position. He could play centre-back, he could play part of a three, he could play wing-back, he could play holding midfield, and he could play each position as well as each other. Four positions. So, you know, whether he wants to go United or what... Listen, we're in pole position at the moment, so... Why do you say that, Kev? Why are we in pole position? Why? Why Because we've made the move. (laughs) We've put the bid in. And because we're going in for a second bid now. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're making the move to let the player know we want you. Personal terms apparently have been agreed. So that's not an issue. So... If you're Arsenal, the key for us, Sophie, is getting them on, getting them across the line. That's the key to to what we're doing. We need to get these players across the line. We came up short at the end of last season. Why? One, we didn't have the experience. Two, we didn't have that mentality, Sophie, to go to some difficult places and grind and, and fight and scrap and stay in the game. We just didn't have it. These type of players, Jesus, I'm sure we're going to cut, speak about him. Martinez, Tielemans, I don't think that deal's dead either. I just think Arsenal are waiting their time. These are the type of players who can help get over the line. Really help us. So, again, getting linked with them is great. So, But we've got to get them in the building. And Arsenal haven't done too bad so far, let's be honest. But we need to get more bodies and we need to get the quality in. I would, say, I would say we haven't done too bad so far in the attachments, right? Fabio Vieira, great signing. I think Arsenal fans, and, and, you know, a lot of the times what I don't like is this narrative. You could see it building already with um, Jesus and we'll get to him next in the sense that He's 25 years old. He's the number nine for Brazil. Kev has talked about this on the show last week and the previous week. You, you, we, Kev and I have talked about giving you the stats regarding him having to be behind Aguero, but what he's contributed to Manchester City, being coached by Pep Guardiola, being around world-class players, being in an environment that breeds success, that lives and breathes absolute first-class engagement as a, a as a professional footballer. There is nothing acceptable other than a hundred percent effort and win and winning mentality and this is what arsenal football club need in their dressing room hence why we wanted a a, a, a Wijnaldum to come in maybe in that short-term fix to help these younger players to bring it around gabriel jesus is only 25 but he's seen a lot for 25 years old right yeah so if Leicester has signed Gabriel Jesus, everyone would say it's phenomenal business. <laughs> of course. 
If Tottenham had signed Gabriel Jesus, they would say, oh, Conte's done an amazing job. But what about, and whether you've agreed or not, or been critical or not, I believe this is the signing, the signing, that shows the true prowess when it is presented itself, Kev, when it has presented itself in a do and Arteta. This is an a do and Arteta deal. This has got nothing to do with anyone else, anything. This is about a player that trusts a coach. This is about a player that has a cultural affinity with the man who brings in players. This is a perfect, I think, storm and example of someone who wants to come and be the main man, trust the people behind making him the main man, and those said main men believing in what they're bringing in and making him what I believe will be the marquee signing of the season. I think this is the quintessential Arteta and Adu signing. Sophie, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something on here. I don't think Arsenal fans know how good this guy is. I don't. He is a top player. And you know what, Sophie? Here's how you know he's a top player. Anytime Man, Man City have the big games, he played. Your Liverpools and all that. He starts. He could mix and match after that, but the big games, Real Madrid in semi final, he starts. He starts. So, people could say what they want. The proof is always in the pudding, so. It's always in the pudding. And Arsenal fan, because, and here's the funny thing, Sophie. Do you know when we signed the, uh, um, Thierry Henry and all these guys? Mm -hmm. Twitter would have been a meltdown if we'd have signed these guys because they would have been saying, what's he done? Yeah, the failures in Italy in Henri it's and Henri You know, so again, I, I love it because I watch the player. I see what a great player he is. Manchester City uh, have to change something. That's what they have to do because the elusive Champions League is not there. And I could imagine Pep was getting noise from upstairs about getting a striker, getting a Aguero type. So, if you're going to do that, you didn't want to make... They needed a statement, Manchester City. Because you could have easily put Jesus up there. But they needed to make a statement and they made it. And you've seen, you see Liverpool respond. But do you know what the sweet spot is? So, them making that move allows us to get Jesus. And here's the other thing, Sophie. Many people said... Because we're not in Champions League, it's going to be difficult to get... He's a world-class player. Nobody can't tell me he's not a world-class player because he starts for Brazil. He starts. That national team is win, 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 win. You have to win. They're built on winning. So, and look at the quality that they've got. So, to be able to be on the bench at times for Man City, but to start for Brazil, that's how highly rated he is. And you know what? I can't wait for the announcement. I can't wait to see him in an Arsenal shirt because I think we're going to see the best of Gabriel Jesus at, at the Emirates. Also, Kev, one of the things that you talk about a lot, and as a fan, I like to see, but also as an ex-player, I know is really important to you, is... He, re he wants to come and play for the manager. Yes. He wants to put that I don't care what on. you think of Arteta. He wants to come and play for Arteta. He has had, a player like him has had plenty of offers. Oh, yeah. And teams were in the Champions League, so. Let's be honest. We've seen them. Teams were in the Champions League. There's only one thing, though, Kev, that I have a pickle about, and I'm not sure I'm able to accept. And hear me out. 500 of you. 
in we live chat. We must have 500 likes. We must. Remember, if you're going to salute and at e squaddies, from there, you just hit the like button. That's what you do. That's what we do from now on. I mean, it's so we've got to have a minimum of 250. We've got to have a minimum of 250. But thanks anyway, listen, for joining us. 500, that's a great number. But we need 250. Doesn't require, like, you know, when you sign up for an app and you get all these instructions about how to sign in and do it. No, it's just simple. From there to there. There you go. Boom. Shakala. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, there's one thing, though, Kev, I'm finding very hard to decipher here with the arrival of Mr. Gabriel, because apparently he likes to use the phone. And apparently Eddie also likes to use the phone. Um, I'm not sure they could both use the phone at the same time. It looks like do. Jesus will come in um, with to join his disciples and hopefully break bread, spread wealth, feed the 5,000. Um, they can't play together, can they, Kev? Or can of they? they can. Of course they can. Oh, tell me but how, Super Kev. Easy. Jesus can play on the left. And he can He's play a wide forward, isn't he, after all? So. He, could, he, could play, he could play anywhere across that front, Jesus. And there might be times, Sophie, where we actually need to make that adjustment. For me, Jesus starts as the nine. But let me tell you something. We've invested in Eddie. One thing Eddie does know, he knows where the goal is, Sophie. He's not been prolific because he hasn't really had a lot of chance. And we don't, I still don't think he's the answer. Okay? Let me just put that out there right now. But the manager believes in him. He believes in him, which is which is fantastic for any player. Put the money on the table for him, and now he's there. I don't know if anybody watches um, Jesus' videos. Some of the goals he's laid on for them City boys, they tap in so. He has quick, he's good at quick passes. There's no doubt he, about that. He gets into position and he, mm. he just sticks it across. That happens. Lacazette wouldn't have the speed to get there. Eddie would. If Jesus is in that position. So can they play together? They can play together and we might see them together at some stage. So, Kev, can I ask you this? Because I remember we, I had that conversation with you after watching Eddie a few times in the UK and stuff where I said to you, he feels to me, having watched Chicharito a lot in his prime, but also here, seems like that six, eight yard box guy. Mm. When the game requires a little bit more depth, he doesn't offer as much. But when the game requires that poaching, not goal, not a hang, you know, goal hanger, He's perfect. So, do you see it as crikey? Is it a four-four-two? Do you see a Dwight York, Andy Cole no. partnership? A Sheringham Cole, a Vieira? No. Is it a more Vieira? Is it more of, of a Thierry Dennis? No. And also, then what happens if they both play? Who's sacrificed out of those other creative forwards? Who cares? Well, I care. I'd like to know which one you think. No, but Sophie, at the end of the day, if the manager wants to play Jesus and, and, and Eddie and whoever on the right, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this brings me to my next question. Please forgive me for jumping in. But right, I have, no I have my When I have you, I've got my notes because I, no I, I need no you problem. for this. I have a hunch. Don't kill me, everyone. All 540 of you in live chat. I'm just saying this out loud because no one's talking about it. Are we making these moves because there might be a chance that he won't sign his new contract? When you say, I care because when I look at these players, Rafinha, Rafinha Vieira, Jesus, this affects everything at that top end of the pitch. It also affects the right. It affects the left, of course. Kev, am I reaching 
Yeah. Oh, Sophie, you're way off. <laughs> really? Uh, wow. Sophie, hold oh, on. I a like minute. to let probe. Me... I like to probe. Yeah, no, I get that. But let me ask you this. It worries question. me. Yeah, but let me ask you this question. Last season, we talk about Eddie going with England. Sorry, Saka going with England. Seeing the likes of Mason Mount and Foden and all these guys. Yeah? They're in the best squads. They've got the best squads and Trent Arnold and all that at Liverpool. They've got the best squads. Arsenal don't have the best squad. So, for us to then keep the likes of Saka, Emil Smith-Rowe, Gabriel Martinelli, there has to be competition for places. There has to be. And now we might get some competition for places. All of a sudden, you're getting worried. You can't solve. Well, you know why I'm getting worried, Kev? Because you and I have talked about this a lot, is that if we do not build the quintessential squad around the likes of him, because he's hanging out with those guys that we've talked about, Trent and Foden and all of these dudes when he's with England and stuff like that, it's he's his head will turn. It happens to everybody. We've we've seen it, especially if your team is not winning. However, if he's going to be playing with a Martinez, Tielemans, I think is dead, but we'll get to that eventually. Uh, a Martinez, or when we when we look at the actual transfer window right now, we've just signed Marquinhos and Vieira. Doesn't exactly make you a top four team or a Europa League winning side, does it? You add Gabriel Jesus to that, love it. Okay, so are you not worried about your cover at right back? You're not worried about your cover at left back? Are you saying Xhaka right, and right Partey? Back. We've got cover at right back. Are you saying who? What do you mean who? Ben White could play right back. Okay, but I mean, what if... You, okay, fine. Yeah. Another player would do. We've always talked about that, no, haven't no, we? Yeah, but I'm saying it, it, it's, it's essentials what you need. We've so got cover at right All back. I'm saying is right now there's talk... Martinez would be sensational. For me, I would rather him all day long over Tielemans. I don't know if you guys have seen this guy play. Like Kev said, he is the juice. His foot, his passing, his accuracy, in terms of fitting into what we do, perfection, right? But then there's those fundamental roles. We're kind of going after roles that maybe we thought were filled, hence why I'm asking you about Saka. Is there something we don't no, but, know? No, but you're not... What you're saying is you're worried about Saka not play. No, Saka will play. Our problem has been, Sophie, if we're if we're really honest as gooners. When you get past that first eleven, we have been weak. We have been weak. Way weak. So, in order to strengthen, we need a stronger squad. So that means. We need to be able to bring in players who can compete for places. We've played Saka too much over the last two seasons. He's got two player of the year. At his, what is he, 2021? Mm -hmm. That's not right, So No, it's not. And Saka needs to win, right? If he needs to win, we need a stronger squad. Okay, so I love I love what you're saying because... Without having that much competition, you and I have always talked about competition and how it's important. It's important in every walk of life. You've got to strive high. You've got to have goals. You've got to do better. You've got to be better. You've got, you've got to want more, especially in sports, right? Mm -hmm. To know there's someone clipping at your heels. And that's something that Arsenal really abandoned under the latter years of Wenger, yeah. right? There was yeah. no competition for places. If you played crap, you, were, you knew you were going to be in the team the next week, Super Kev. Mm. Can you take me in the mind of the player when you're good at what you do and you know you're good at what you do and the newbies come in and you're an established player at the club? How does that feel? What it's does the that best. Talk me, talk me through that a little bit. Sophie's the best because these are players you 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 obviously you watch them on TV and you see them play, some of them you play against, and then you see them come into the building. 
So the level of training always goes up because you want to see how good they are. You want to show them how good you are. So new signings coming in are always a good thing for a football club, let alone this level of player. Players like Jesus, where he's got four Premier League titles so And he's coming in to be the main man. You know, you, you've got quality Vieira. You've got Martinez, if you can get a Martinez. You've got Tielemans, if you can get a Tielemans in. These are players who are going to make you better. These are players who, when you train and play every day, you start to get a wavelength of what they're like, how good they are. And you see that level of training, because trust me, Sophie, if you don't train that way, you don't play that way. Mm -hmm. So the level of training has to be up there to be more competitive week in, week out. And some players embrace that. And uh, never, I, I, I respect what you're saying. They're different style of players, but I'm talking about, I feel in terms of immediate contribution and game changing, I don't know why I put my eggs in the Martinez basket versus the Tielemans basket. And I have a huge amount of respect and I like Tielemans a lot, but Kev, um, some players don't respond as well to that, do they? They don't like the concrete being punctured who, from under who, their which feet. Play, well, obviously they're not big, big. They're not players for big teams. So, <laughs> how, how do you think our players? They've been used to a short, fine squad with only domestic competitions. Now we throw in Europa League. How do they adapt to to this? Currently, as we know, the, the the team's not ready for European football or the domestic competitions or the Premier League because so, we're still forget, slight. They've played, they've played. A lot of the players have played in European. You know, so we do, they do know what European oh, football no, no. is like. Oh, no, no. I know they know what the vibe is, but in terms of depth. Yeah, but what, so this is the whole point. Sophie, if you've been involved in it and you haven't won, mm -hmm. bringing quality in makes all the difference. It makes all the difference because we talk about losing the likes of Saka, Smith, Roll. They might be, you know, they might be looked at you. Their head might get turned. There's only one way we're going to address that. So it's to bring the bodies in and build that team to win. That's the only way because you know what, Sophie, if we don't win, they're gone. Mm. Do you That's think, uh, do you think, um, Kev, all right, this is good for Monday Madness. We've talked about the Cronkies and winning again and their philosophy of building time, young managers, throwing the dice at maybe unproven coaches. We talked about Saka. Is this a smokescreen? Are we going after these players because Saka isn't signing his contract? Is it insurance? Or is this truly about building a team that's ready to fight? for the Premier League, for the domestic trophies in Europe. Um, we've mentioned Martinez and, and Jesus. Kev, I wanted to also touch on the, the, the core of the team, right, which we do believe is the midfield and, of course, you know, at the back as well. Now, Matt Turner's coming in. That was announced today. We've talked about Matt. We're going to hopefully talk to Matt in the future as well and, and, and do a lot more on that. But one of the things that concerns me is the left back, the left back cover and the lack of dialogue and conversation in that area. Is, well, we just is, discussed the left back cover. Well, who's that? Well, that's cover. That's not. No, you just that... said we're going to discuss the cover. He is okay. the cover. Okay. Okay. So, so well, let me let me rephrase it. Do we need an alternative starting option at left back? No, we don't. Because Martinez, this is why it's key to get this play, this type of player. So, because he can play all of those positions as well as any other four four or five positions, he could play. As well as anyone. So I'm asking, it's not a square peg round hole situation. No, ben no. White right back. Uh, this is that. This is what I want to make clear to our listeners no, with no, your it's not. input. It's not, not at all. 
So he is more important than Tielemans as a sign. No, no, it's no they're as important as each other. Mm. Be, here's here's the reason why they're important as each other, Sophie. Just like you mentioned, we need that cover. We need some experience at the back. We need that toughness. What they call him, the butcher, the bulldog, or where we need some of that toughness at the back. So Kieran Tierney does tend to get injured. He can slot in there. Thomas Partey at times does tend to get injured. He can go in that midfield, put his foot in. I think we're a little bit stumped if both of them are out injured like they were at the end of last season. So, but at least we know he can go to left back. We can bring in El Nene who can do a job or whatever. But there comes <clears throat> the reason why a lot of our flow goes when party isn't there. We need a schema. We need somebody who can score. We need somebody who can pick passes. We need somebody who's more offensive. When you look at the rate Man City and Liverpool score at, so, because what we've got to be doing, so, we've got to be building to challenge. And yeah, we might not challenge them right away, but what's the point in bringing players in who are, are not good enough to help us challenge? We have to be bringing in players who are going to make us better, make Martinelli better, make Saka better, make Jesus better, make Eddie better, make whoever Odegaard better, Xhaka better. That's what we've got to do. So would you prefer a Zinchenko or a Martinez? Martinez for me. He's our box spanner. He fits in so many different positions. He does. And he's got that ruggedness. Hey, I like Zinchenko as a player. I think he's a really good player. But I think Martinez has got more strings to his bow. So, Kev, I hope you can understand why I'm asking you, because a lot of the times when it gets to injuries, we put square pegs in round holes. But it's different if you're putting round holes in round holes, i.e. Martinez is a connoisseur in that position or Martinez in a co is a connoisseur in, in this football position. Ben White, what is his strength? Is it right? Is it in the middle? You know, Tommy Yasu can play left, can play right. Cedric can play this and play that. I think with Arsenal, what I'm trying to get at is I would love specialists in every position. So ideally, that's your starting eleven. Modern football, I understand, is more flexible. It's more robust okay, so, and hybrid, Kev. Okay, so, so if you want specialists in every position, mm -hmm. what position does Martinez... What do you, have you, and you say Martinez is the most important. What position does he play in? Well, I mean, I'd like him to play that deep-lying midfielder. I think he has that Xavi Alonso-esque sweeping left foot pass, can break a defence, can break a play in any minute, can hold the ball, can be commanding in the middle, can have more of an impact on the game, I think, in that position. And again, that's why I went to Saka, because Saka has deputised at left back. Are we looking at all these different things? Because behind the scenes, are there other players that might be leaving? It might not be Xhaka, but it might be someone else like a Maitland Niles who's come back where does he he's going to go off yeah, is yeah gonna, think, you know those players I, yeah fine. but I don't think they've got no no but I'm saying like I'm not I'm not talking about those players in that regard but I would love it if we we could say like our starting 11 was good last season but it could be so much better than that and I understand the modern game is multiple positions, but at the same time, too, I would love specialists. Um, yeah, I don't but, know, Kev. Yeah, but he's a he's a defender by trade. And yeah, which is why I think that deep lying role, though. Yeah, but you see, here's the difference: we're going to be a possession team, and when you look at the the stats, because we know stats can lie, but. When you look at when party plays and when party don't, there's such a massive drop-off. Massive drop-off. Our problem is, Sophie, we, have, we don't create enough. We don't score enough goals. That's our problem. We don't score enough. When we have the chance to bury teams, we don't take them out. Hence why... I, I reckon a Tielemans is, will be, or that type will be so important. That's why we signed Vieira. 
because people who can operate higher up the pitch, who can make a difference when teams bank up, is going to give us so much more offense than we've had before. Mm. So I understand what you're talking about, Martinez, but I think Martinez, if party was injured, Martinez could come in there. That I get. But I think we want to be an offensive team. We want to score goals. We want to put teams to the sword. So I don't see Martinez starting ahead of party. That's why I think Tielemans will be ideal in there because of his offence. Kev, do you, do you think that he's also thinking, like if you have a Vieira and a Martinez, I think this shapes the early stages of our Europa League squad. Well, you've got to think about everybody, haven't you? You've got mm. to think about who's going to play. You've got to think about everybody getting minutes. I think it's really important everybody gets minutes as well, Soph. Uh, if you're playing on a Thursday and then you're playing on a Sunday, how do you freshen it up? You know, we've got to be able to freshen that team up. And this is where Saliba comes in as well. You know, but you've got to have the quality to get through as well as be competitive in the league and in the Cups. That's been our downfall in the cup, Sophie. When you, As soon as you change that, that first eleven. We haven't been strong enough depth-wise. That has to change this, this window. And I believe it will. Well, it has to change, Kev, because we're going to be playing a lot more games. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. And this is why I think, like, a lot of the times we're looking for the sexy name on the back of the shirt, but who else can we bring in at value pricing that is going to be able to play in the League Cup? you know, in the, in, in the FA Cup, who from the under 23 team is going to come up, Kev? Is Balogun going to go back out on loan? Is Aziz going to get a shot? Is Reese Nelson going to stay? Is, probably not. you know, what's happening with some of these players? Sophie, Sophie, the bar has just been raised. Mm. And it's not, Oh, we've got a good young kid coming through. All of a sudden, he's pulled into the first team. No, you've got to earn that. <laughs> because to get in the first team is mega hard. Okay, so with that said, to dovetail on it, MK, welcome to the show. She wants, what's Patino's future, Kev? Do you see him being a part of the squad this season? He could, um, he could be. He could get some minutes in the Euro e Europa, but... Until he, I believe he's got to, he's going to have to go out on loan. He's going to have to fill out. He's going to have to strengthen. We saw what happened to him at Forest, didn't we? And it weren't and it weren't pretty. But that that's all part and parcel. Because you know what, Sophie? What? Ha let me tell you what happens. Patino comes on in the League Cup and scores a goal. Feels good. He trains with the boys. He feels good. Mm -hmm comes up against the championship team and he starts and all of a sudden they shut him down they smash him very physical so what does he what now he comes off and he thinks wow i couldn't even get on the ball i couldn't even influence the game i couldn't do couldn't couldn't couldn't, couldn't. so what does he have to do he has to go away he has to understand he has to work on his game and he's got to get better sophie that's the way it is. You have to go away and get better. So the next time we see him and the team wants to do that, we've got to be able to see him play around the press, be stronger, be a bit more physical. And maybe that comes with not only training with the first team, that maybe comes with going out on loan and playing some games. Kev, does it worry you that there have been a few players like an Aziz and... I don't know, does it concern you that if you've been out on loan a couple of times, are the club going to start thinking, are you really part of what we want to do here? Like, do you think he's one of those? Well, as long as you're signed for Arsenal, you've always got to prove yourself. 
That's the name of the game, Sophie. So you go on loan and you've got to prove yourself. Now, if you go on loan and you don't prove yourself, look, one thing Arsenal know, if you go on loan, you're not going to be around the quality of player that is at Arsenal. They get that. Balogun went out and looked pretty good at Middlesbrough. Aziz, there was times where he looked okay and there was times where it didn't go so well for him. So let's see again. He may need to go out on another long where he's a year wiser. So, and, that, and that's how you judge. That's how you judge, you know, how your progress is coming. Now, if you go out on loan again and you don't do the business, then you're going to start being questioned because a club like Arsenal, Sophie, when you're putting the foundations in and you're bringing in the type of player, level of player that we expect to bring in, you ain't going to get a lot of chances. Okay, 640 of you in live chat. Thanks so much for joining the Highbury squad on this fine Monday with Thank Super you. Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. Uh, Kev, there's so many comments coming in about how Vieira needs to build his strength and how this person needs to build and build. Um, hey, by the way, <laughs> Vieira, like I say, is being brought in to be like a silver. Bernardo Silva type. Yeah, I know you were going to say that. Yeah, he's been brought in to, to, to play between the lines in some of those difficult games for somebody who can give us a spark. Mm -hmm. And no one talked about Bernardo Silva ne needing to build up his muscle when he came to City. No one talks about these slight players who have become... Havertz is so tall and lanky and skinny. You feel like if but you blow, strong. he'll fall but over, strong. but he's strong. He's strong. So let's just park that for a little bit and give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Right, a few more questions here for Kev before we go. One from Demsec. Super Kev, will we go for a third striker? I hope so, Demsec. I really hope so. But at the moment, I can't see it. At the moment... I think there's other areas of the team that we've really got to strengthen. Yeah. I'd love another striker. Tall one, but tall one starts with rhymes with jammy. <laughs> Saying that's just when we just adjust my glasses. Um <laughs> uh, Aston. Hola, how are you? Do we loan out Nuno, Super Kev? Yeah, probably. We do loan him out. Or if somebody's willing to pay the 45 million self, they could buy him. Because oh. I, I think what Mikel Arteta learned last season is you learn a lot when the chips are down. So when things are going good, Okay, great. But you learn more from adversity. And when the adversity came for Nuno, he weren't quite there. And that is young and yeah. But at the end of the day, so Arsenal can't afford to be waiting too long. Hence yeah. why I think Martinez, Arsenal are like hell bent on getting someone who could just get in and do the job now. No messing. Real quick before I put on a couple more questions before we duck out, Kev. Um, what did you think of Darren Ambrose's comment of how he felt that Arteta was maybe the only manager who was preparing for five subs next season? I thought that was an over-compliment in the sense that maybe we'd have more Marquinhos or these kind of grindy, squaddy type of players. I don't know. Like, I... I don't know if we're ready for that yet. Do you? I, I don't know no, if it was just no, a clickbait. The bottom type. line is, so we've, we want to be up there challenging. That's the bottom line. So whether he's preparing for five subs or not, our squad needs needs players to make it better. That's the bottom line. So Do you like the five subs, Kev? Listen, there's about... You pick five from, what is it, seven or eight now, isn't it? Does it... Listen, the game's changing so so. I'm no. not, I'm, listen, whatever. If you get five subs, it's five subs. So what? But you know what? It might allow us to win a few more games. That's True. what I look at it. True. 
it might just, and that's why maybe, Demsec, that's why another striker might help. <laughs> A big striker okay. might help. I'm five minutes on the clock here, so these are quick fire ones. Kev, how much do you think we get? Universal Greek, always good to hear from you. How much? 10 million? Yeah, he's not going to go for a lot of money. He's not. Um, I think maybe 12 and a half, 15 max we get for him. All right. Um, from JD, will a midfield trio of Odegaard, Partey, Vieira work next season against teams with low blocks? Because I think most teams will do that to us or will it leave us prone to counter attacks? Just like the marketing world does my brain in when I sit in a meeting and all these new buzzwords come out. One of my least favorite football things is, not no offense to you, JD, low block. It, it it might work against certain teams. It might. The key is when we get our opportunities, we've got to take them. That's the key. I'd I'd, I'd like um, a Vieira. If if we're playing party Odegaard Vieira, we've got to be safe at fullback. Our fullback Tierney and and. Tommy Arsu has to be playing. Has to be playing. That's for sure. Okay. Um, let's get this one from Kev. Where did it go? It was a question about Arteta and it was a question about if he finishes eighth again. Oh, come what on. Should, what should happen? That's, forget The machete's here. I've told you. The machete is here. There's no more eighth. We've no got to, we've got to be challenging it in the top four and challenging for the cups. We have nobody has a divine right to win, but we've got to be challenging. We're not spending this money to mess around. So I don't even want to hear about eighth. Kev, can you give everyone a wave before we go? No, I'm not waving to Newman. Why should I wave to him? <laughs> I've already given the salute to everybody. That's true. It's enough, why is isn't he, why, it? Why is he one away? All right. Who Here's, is, is he? Is he better than everybody else? Wow. We're on a mission for next no, season. Things are changing he better, around here. Is he better than everybody else? No, that I said he, everyone. I put no, his no, comment no, up, no, but no, I said no. everyone. Yeah, I know, but I've given everybody a salute. So I'm saying, is Newman better than everybody no, else? No, I mean, of course, no of course one's better than not. anyone. So no. stop with that wave business, Newman. Sloppy, Newman, sloppy. Okay, so here's the agenda. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't wash my hair. Here's the agenda for this week. You've had Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell on this fine Monday madness. 640 of you still in live chat, and I'm getting this show in under an hour if this is the last thing I do, but I have a feeling it's not because when there's 640 of you in live chat, I feel like we're leaving something on the table. Tell me what you want to talk about. Put it out there before I give you the housekeeping for the week. Tomorrow we have a Tuesday two a day. Ooh. All right, Tuesday two a day. We have Susie Rack who is a lead football writer for The Guardian. She's a specialist in women's football, football. She's written a great new book, and she's going to be someone who you will be hearing a lot of during the women's Euros. And in her book, she pretty much has every football women's legend that has played the game, quote. She's amazing. So Susie Rack joins us at 8 p.m. UK time. And then at 10 p.m. UK time, it's episode two of Kicking It with Jess and Soph. We host it this week on the Highbury squad. Who knows? There might be a secret question from Super Kev for you guys. But tune in because we'll be talking a little bit about everything. So join me and Jess at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. UK time. All right. Then on Wednesday, we have Dave Seeger and some of the very special subjects from his book, Arsenal for Everyone. You'll be listening and hearing from some of the incredible people who have contributed to the Arsenal community and are part of Dave's book, which the club have endorsed and supported um, throughout its release. 
And I just thought in the summer, we could all use a feel good story. And these are inspirational people that we haven't heard from before. And they'll give you a rundown on what it's like to be um, part of the Arsenal community and what it is to be a disabled uh, um, supporter of the club as well. Our club is probably one of the best super Kev at yeah. taking care of our fans. Cater, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that is on Wednesday. It's a surprise at the end of the week, but I won't mention that yet. Freestyle. Super Kev, that's all I've got for the troops. What else? Did you have a good weekend? Did you party? Did you listen to some funky music? Always, always funky music. Always. Yeah, um, yeah I was busy. I've got, I, I was on um, Hollywood Balls with Geordie Pete on Saturday. And after that, I was doing uh, project stuff. Saturday and Sunday, I went visiting some family as well. And... Um, I've got a I've got a quite a busy week. I'm I'm on Radio Five Live tomorrow. I'm on Talksport on nice. Wednesday, and then I'm uh, got project stuff um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's it's pretty hectic in the Campbell in the Campbell household. We are taking you when we can, and before we go, we wanted to say a very very special congratulations to this young fella, Mister Kyle. Campbell, who signed for and now Kev, please pronounce it for me because I'll Al Sager, Al Sager Town, Al FC, Sager Town, which is it near Crew, and um, Kyle decided after play just playing locally, he was at Man City as a kid and didn't like it, so I said, "Don't do it, then, son." So we came out of that and just played with his mates, and at fifteen, he turned around and says. I want to play football now. So I said, son, you're going to have to start at the bottom. And he said, no problem. He said, I, I, I can't wait. So he's having a lot of fun going down the non-league route. So look how happy he is. Brilliant. He's, nine, he's only 19 he years old. So he's having a lot of fun with it. So that's good. He looks so happy. The club seems so stoked to have him. The messages on um, social media were fantastic. Just really, just wonderful and you know, positive and uh, a lot of the squad is sending in their best wishes for him as well. Now, Kev, you know I want the exclusive on the Campbell crew round table, right? No exclusives. <laughs> Do I need to reach out to them myself? They, they don't speak to me. <laughs> they right. don't speak to sure. you. Speak I to will them. reach out to them myself. You speak to them and you okay. get on with them. Do you right. know, they don't. Do you reckon the boys want that? No, I should have known that. I don't even know why I said that out loud. The to boys be don't want that on with them. No <laughs> chance. You got no chance. Well, we'll definitely get them on together. It would be a great conversation. And um, congratulations to Kyle. Thanks Best for wishes all the good to luck you. Messages, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Beautiful Thank stuff. You. Um, right. So that's it. That's it for today. Um, Kev, what else would you like to wrap up? Because we're going to get you whenever we have you um, over this summer period. Um, so we soak you up when we have you here. So far, everything's okay. Nothing major going on. By the way, tune into the Gooners pod at 10 o'clock UK time, you guys. Um, Magic Mike's doing something crazy. I don't know. It sounds like some religious thing, but it's not. It's just a metaphor, I think. But go ahead, tune into Magic Mike at ten. <laughs> He'll let you know. Kev, what what do you what do you think? Are you are you cool so far? You, of course. Yeah, I've got no problem. Listen, I like the, who we're being linked with. I like the, the little bit of business the club have done so far. But again, so we've got to get them over the line. That makes all the difference for us. But you know what I really love about the Jesus. I like the fact Spurs fans, Chelsea fans are upset <laughs> because he never went to them. He's come to us. That always yeah. goes down well. So I love that part. I love that part too, very much so. And I love that you guys have joined us on this fine Monday evening. Um, we know that the transfer universe is going on and the stories can twist and turn and change every single day. And our role here is to find threads and arcs that are interesting and engaging for us to talk about um, during this off season as well. More specials coming your way. Don't forget to look out for the shows and the information on our YouTube channel, on the community page and also Twitter. Super Kev, we may or may not see you for the rest of this week, but we may see you via... 
video? Potentially, yes. You may see me via video link. I like that sweatshirt, by the way. Do you have a cold, by the way? You're not. Are you okay? You Listen, like, is it hay fever? No, it's not hay fever. It's um, I went down to the. You know, I went down to a wedding last weekend. Oh, it was those weddings. London spreaders. was freezing. Really. It was cold, and I mm. I picked up a cold. So it's it's all coming out now. So it is one of them things. But I be, listen, I feel good. That's the main be, thing. You'll be pleased to know they did what you asked, Super Kev, and you can take us out on this. Four hundred likes. They're all reporting right away. I tell you what, Squaddy, that's why <laughs> you are the absolute best. On. You are the best. <laughs> this is listen. Let's not let's not let it slip now. Sophie hostess with the mostest, putting in all these summer series. Super Kev coming on whenever he can. Look, she got the samurai. Don't mess around. But squaddies, <laughs> we really thank you for joining us. Always remember, tell your loved ones you love them. Wherever you are, take care. Morning, evening, afternoon. And squaddies, you know what's next. At ease, squaddies. At ease. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.